Hi, this is Troy from Full Gamut Defense Arts. Um, starting to redo the straight sword videos for the, the Hunyan 48 straight sword Jin. Okay. Um, I am going to leave the other videos up. Um, people that have contacted me directly say they're perfectly fine, leave them alone. But I want to redo them, so I'm going to do a whole new series. And I'm going to include some of my thoughts on what's going on, okay? Um, at least giving examples of why the movement is the way it is. So um, I'm going to do the first section tonight. Um, and I will have to look at my notes because uh, my brain will not retain these names tonight for some reason. So the first six postures are Chishur, opening form, Immortal Points the Way, Flower Hidden Under Leaf, Crimson Phoenix Faces the Sun, Splitting Sword Probe the Sea, and Green Dragon Emerges from Water. So. Uh, Uh, I will demo and try to stay on camera as best I can. Um, I have limited room here. Um, I think I will try to move the camera back a bit more. Maybe that will help. Um, but um, we'll just adjust as needed in order to stay on camera. So, and I'm sorry if I keep touching the mic. It seems to droop a little bit. All right. First section. Okay, that is the first section, pretty short. Um, so, starting off with the opening. This is the opening for the 48 empty hand form. It's the exact same opening. So, we start off with our heels together or close together. We're using secret sword hand, okay? Um, so that's what I was always called in my school, so that's what I still call it. So the two fingers extended. I'm not flipping you off, I'm showing you the back of the hand. The pinky finger, ring finger, and thumb are touching at the nail. The thumb is over the nails of the other two. The other two are extended. Not stiff, but just extended. Okay. The right hand, I'm starting off with the thumb and three fingers wrapped around the hilt, okay, and then one finger extended along, along the handle, okay. I'm sorry, the guard, and then the hilt, okay. So a lot of people want to grab down here with their whole hand. That is a mistake. That is that prevents you from taking the sword into your right hand when it's time. Also, you're tweaking your wrist to the side in order to do that. You can see how my wrist is twisted to the side. Okay, if I do this, then the wrist is fairly straight, the finger is extended, and I'm just cupping the weight in the hand. And the extended finger is just keeping the sword from falling 
It's just there to help with the balance of it. The sword is flat against the back of my arm, the back of my forearm here. Okay, So it's here, okay. here, as opposed to here, where you can see I'm a lot more tense. Here I can be more relaxed. Okay. So we're starting off there feet together, sink into the right, step out left, toe turned out. Um, I've been over this before, but I start here with my feet turned out more than when I am here. So I make an adjustment, but you do not have to. So I start here, sink, step out. I shift left and adjust my right toe before I come back Again, up to you. Then we are folding up and then folding down as we sink. Then we fold up, unfold up. We make a slight circle and that's when I'm shifting left, sinking left, shifting right, standing up in the right. And then I shift left, sink in the left. And that is the whole opening, the whole of Cheshire. Then a slight turn to the left. I'm already weighted left. A little bit more to the right and the raising up just about shoulder height. Sinking into the right, shift left. And I'm going to circle just like in the 24 or 48, but the left hand is abbreviating that circle. So I come up. and the hilt is coming down at center line. I'm sinking in the right, and then I'm going to press out, but I'm not doing this because I'm keeping the sword against the back of the arm. This raises my shoulder and causes all kinds of tension. So all I'm doing is bowing the arm. If I take the sword out of that hand, I just have a low bow to the arm. Okay? I'm bowing the arm, and I'm turning that flat of the blade out somewhat. The right hand comes up and extends, sink into the left, shift right, and now I'm going to hook forward. And I, my weight is in the left. Then I'm going to shift into the right, and as I start to have bring the hand up, I shift left because I'm going to step with the right. Shifting into the right as the hand comes in towards my face and my center line, and then stepping through empty to a cat stance and cutting horizontally across. And this hand, I'm going to show you, comes down and touches at the wrist, but we're here. Okay? And that is um, Immortal Points the Way, I believe. Yes, immortal points the way. Now, what's going on here? Before we go on. So we've got our opening. This is a typical, just, it's an opening for the form. Um, but here, when we're circling and we're coming out and then out with this hand, with this extension, What's going on? Well, an example is that we're blocking something out, not necessarily a sword, and we're coming in for a soft target. Okay? Could be an eye, could be the sternoclavicular notch right here, okay? Right where the clavicles come together, there's this notch. Okay? Very good target for finger strikes, okay? It can also be to the side of the esophagus and the trachea area in between the jugular and the esophagus. You can come in here with two fingers. That would be more of a horizontal than a, I mean, a, a vertical than a horizontal, but it's the same, same idea. You can strike into those areas. You can also strike up inside the jaw bone up into this area. All very sensitive 
soft target areas. And of course, I already mentioned the eyes. So this, in my opinion, could very well be blocking something out, uh, keeping somebody from grabbing or punching and striking a soft target. Okay. And then we see we're here, and then we relax, okay, and then we're coming forward. Now this could be a hook, okay? Could be a hook. Um, if you're into pressure points, you don't have to be, but if you are, um, you may have a couple of ideas of what that could be. Because it's pulling in but not completely, it implies that it could be a kind of a grab. Now what kind of a grab would it be? Well, you could be hooking behind the jaw. You could be hooking the ear. If you've ever had anybody actually grab your ear, sorry, between fingers and give it a twist. Um, it may not be a super um, game ending uh, or fight ending technique, but it is a possibility. I'm just throwing it out there. It could also be another kind of soft target strike. It could be a temple. It could be raking the eyes. It could be coming in to one of these not the center so much, but the side here. It could be, it, but it's, it, if it's a strike, it could be a soft target strike. That's all I'm saying, just throwing it at you. Okay, so we've done one, and then we do another one. It looks like the same, but we're, we're stepping with it, and it's coming in as we strike. So I ha I'm thinking more along the lines of an incoming hand and hooking, getting it out of the way, and cutting. Now, this is not a I'm going to disembowel you cut. cut. There's no power in it. Um, holding the sword like this, you're not going to get a whole lot of power. And this isn't a power weapon anyway. The tip, this, the tip of this sword, if it was a real one, should be, for this first inch, absolutely razor sharp. Then about the upper third is sharp, but not as sharp, and then pretty much dulling as it goes back. So blocking and redirecting is done back here, cutting long drawing cuts up here, and razor cuts here. So this, to me, is not a big drawing cut because of the action. It's a razor cut coming across the abdomen. Okay. Then I'm sinking, step around behind myself, and this feels like an, an unstable position because it is. You're not meant to stop here. You step and come around, okay? So you're stepping, you're going to sweep across with this tassel. That's one of the reasons the tassel is there. People come up with all kinds of reasons. You wrap it around your hand to keep it from slipping and once it's soaked in blood and all that kind of garbage. It's a distraction and, it's a, and it is used for attack. Okay? So it's sweeping across, followed with a very definite strike to a soft target. My weight is in my left, okay, and the sword is down at the side just like we were at the very beginning, okay, here, except that I'm in a weight, uh, a, a, a left stance here, okay, and then I'm going to sink and circle back, and as the hand comes forward, the right goes back. The hand continues its circle, sweeping down, and then the left comes up, and using the flat of the blade, it sweeps down and out as the right continues and comes up, and we come back into a cat stance. 
Okay, so we're here. We go step back, get our foot out of the way, and we're blocking. Okay, and that's what I think this is doing. Maybe this is the first weapon attack we've come across in the form. We're blocking with the flat of the blade and getting our leg out of the way of it. Okay. Why is this hand coming up? Because it's going in for another soft target attack before we do another cut across and we take the sword into our active dominant hand for the first time in the form. So one more time. Get out of the way. Give one more attack followed by another abdomen type cut. Take the sword in the other hand and thrust forward. Our first active attack. Then we drop the tip and we circle all the way around. Why? Anything coming in this area can be blocked. Now, are you going, if there's something coming in up here, and are you going to go, uh? no, of course you're not. You're going to go, you know, use the, the blade to its, to its best, and you're going to abbreviate the circle. But the idea is that I can drop my t tip and I can s block anything in this entire clock-faced circle. Okay? And then I'm going to come up with the sword, ending parallel with the ground, elbow down, shoulder down, and at the same time, the left hand thrusts forward and the knee comes up. Okay? Am I just posing? Maybe. Maybe I've seen too many kung fu movies and I'm posing. What else can I be doing? Every time the leg comes up, it's an implied knee or foot technique. So this happening at the same time tells me that I'm either doing a palm strike Oh, I'm still in secret sword hand with this hand. But do I necessarily have to be? Well, I could. I could leave it alone. I can still do a, an ox jaw type strike with secret sword hand because I'm hitting with this part of my, my palm. Or I can be. Okay? So I can be doing that. I can also turn it into a palm heel strike or a true ox jaw strike just by opening the hand. Because our forms are our encyclopedia, our dictionary, this and this don't necessarily have to be in the same technique. This to me, what this is, says to me is, I can strike with this, but there's no need to bring the knee up if I do. I can protect myself here while I kick. So to me, that's what's going on there. So getting back to the breakdown, we've dropped. I've shown that I can block anything in a 360, and I come up. I'm striking, I'm kicking, I'm pr protecting. Okay, And then we're turning to a different opponent. Okay, We cut down. Okay. The weight stays in the right. Okay. I'm turning to form, if this is form north, this is form northeast. I'm turning to form northeast, and I'm setting my left foot down, and the toe is almost straight north. Okay. And I'm cutting down, augmenting with the left fingers on the right wrist. Then, And I think that's a fairly obvious one. It's a cut down. In fact, it's one of the few chops that we really do with this type of weapon. Then we're going to draw back, and it's not drawing straight back. It's drawing back in a curve. 
Again, why? Is it just because everything in Tai Chi is done on a curve? Maybe. Maybe it's prettier. What else could it be? Larger shield between myself. If I do this, the size of the shield stays the same. Okay? If I do this, the size of my shield between me and whatever it is got a little bit longer. It's protecting more of my center. It's protecting my femoral arteries, which are a great um, target for that razor sharp tip. So I'm coming back. I'm going to step in and I can do a twisting thrust down or I can do a straight thrust down. It's entirely up to you. Depends on what you think of as your target. Personally, I think I'm going for the foot, so I twist. Like I'm going right between the bones of the top of the foot. That's my target. You could be going higher up onto the calf or somewhere on the lower leg. Or you could actually be even higher and there's that femoral artery, but you're doing a thrusting cut. Not necessarily a thrust with the tip, but a cut. So this is a drawing cut. Okay, This would be a thrusting cut. Okay? So you're doing a thrusting cut there. You're just a little bit higher. Okay, We're going to set the foot down. We're going to come across. Okay, Another great big sweeping cut or a or a block, um, a warning, get back, and I draw back, protecting myself, making my, I'm bringing my body, um, my center line is facing north, I'm looking west, and I'm making myself a narrow target, and I'm protecting my head, and then I'm going to step out, so I stance and I'm going to step forward and thrust. So there's another straightforward and this one is directly at throat height. So I think that one's a fairly obvious target and what is going on with it. But that is the end of our first section. And I know I may have rambled a bit, but keeping all of that in mind now, let me demo the whole section all in one and see if you see the same things I am. I'm going to step over a little bit here. Okay, and that is the first section of the Hunyuan 48 Jian. Thank you.